display flying in the UK. That's an achievement. Oh yes. You've got four engines to feed and uh, big systems and it's just like a big, big sailing boat. It's, Lots of pilots. Uh, <laughs> pilots, crews, engineers and, and uh, being big is, uh, is not more difficult in terms of technology but it's difficult in, st in terms of man hours. We've started somewhat of a, a, a historical little event with the B-17, ladies and gentlemen. Every year we get the Manhattan Dolls to come in. And they're going to come in and sing a cappella live for the B-17. From the B-17's own country. Thinking of all those guys 70 years ago, those young guys. This is the sort of music they may be listening to. Yep. This is the sort of music. And this is the sort of girl they would be running and this after. This is the sort of girl they'd be running after, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> girls? Oh. girls, whenever you're ready, you get one mic, and you get to be 17, and you get a full crew. Sally B. Thank you. Thank you, girl. girls. <laughs> well, this was a kind of a salute. Why not? Those young men flying these flying machines during the war had not, on their own, decided they were going to do that, and they had to do it. And, uh, well, they played their part. Over 40,000 crew members were lost by the American Air Force during the war in Europe. 40,000, that's, that's quite a population. Well, Sally B flies as a, a living memorial to 70,000 Allied airmen that were lost totally during the Second World War. So she never flies alone. And you'll see that uh, flying formation was one of the little friends, like they called them at the time, which was uh, it was a Mustang. It, it, when P-51 arrived on the scene, the B-17 and B-24 uh, crews uh, were were quite happy because suddenly they had uh, an escort fighter, which was able to fly from Britain to the heart of Germany and back and uh, add enough fuel and wrench to protect them during the whole trip uh, to and from. And uh, this was uh, a revolution for them because uh, suddenly they felt protected. Well, Sally B is a B-17G. She's gone on the uh, UK and European airshow circuit for an astounding 40 years. Mm -hmm. 
brought to the UK by Ted White, Nelly Salingbo, who carried out extensive restorations and created the aircraft we love to see today. Flying the B-17, uh, well, when you think that average age for the uh, left seat pilots on the B-17 was something like 22 years old, and that most of them had never flown before, and in the span of 18 to 20 months, after being first trained on steermans, biplanes, and, and then uh, getting into bigger and bigger machinery and more complicated, they ended up flying these big things. It's a big aircraft with big systems, complicated systems. It doesn't fly on its own. There is no thing automated in these machines. You do everything by hand and by brain. And uh, it's incredible to think that uh, they were able to turn normal human beings into uh, commanders of such ships in such a short time and achieve so much uh, performance. The bomb was open. open. Yep. Closing up. And the drag, not much, makes a big noise though inside the aircraft when you open the bomb doors. It's uh, <laughs> you know, kind of a cyclone inside the the hull. Well, Ellie in the B-17 actually started, was one of the founders of the big Warbirds air shows in, in Europe. She started the uh, great Warbirds air show which ran for 13 years at West Morling. Moved later, now she's running her smoke as a tribute to all the members of the B-17 Preservation Club being flown beautifully this morning, this afternoon by Peter Kuypers. Very graceful aircraft. It's a very muscular aircraft to fly in terms, it depends if you're gifted and if you spend enough time you learn to uh, maneuver these machines. It's true also of the DC-3 which are which is same period technology and aerodynamics and the thing is that you it's an airplane you don't